Hi, my name is Rebecca Jimenez, and I'm the school social worker at Woodland Park Middle School. Now more than ever, we are trying to navigate being around our family members for long periods of time and usually in pretty close proximity to one another. Even when we typically get along with each other, this adds a lot of stress to an already really stressful situation. This can lead to big feelings and arguments. In today's video, we're gonna learn some tips about how to avoid these types of conflicts. Hi, my name is Lesia Weglars and I am a school counselor at Woodland Park Middle School. I am also the mother of a high schooler that attends a school in San Marcos Unified School District. I um, talk to families all the time about how difficult this time is. And as a parent, I could totally relate to having to navigate work and also trying to stay on top of my student to get his work done as well. Speaking to my teenager, I know how frustrating and hard it is to sit in front of your computer all day long, maybe taking challenging courses that go well beyond the two o'clock, three o'clock end time. So usually when he's wrapping up his live classes, I might be coming home. And I know for myself, work is really stressful right now. Trying to navigate everything, manage everything in a virtual format is really hard. And there are some times that I come home and I'm overwhelmed and I'm frustrated and I'm stressed out. And um, then I put on my next hat and I'm a mom. And it's so hard not to bring home that frustration and that stress, um, especially when it's so hard for our students and for so hard for our kids to be motivated and engaged in distant learning. So one thing that I find myself doing is um, kind of being mindful that I'm stressed out, being like okay and recognizing that it's okay to not be okay sometimes. Um, and when I come home, I'm really mindful of just trying to connect with my son. As much as I wanna say, what homework are you working on? Or why aren't you working on your homework? Or have you checked your grades? Or all of those things that might add to my stress and anxiety, I just take a while. I take. 15, 20, 30 minutes to just kind of settle into being home and then coming back and giving him a break too um, after a long day. It is really hard for all of us. Um, and I definitely want my son to know that first and foremost, um, although I care about his learning and I care about his grade, first and foremost, I want him to be okay. And so taking that little time once I get home to not question him about anything. With big feelings, we have big reactions. In our house, we seem to be crashing into each other all day long. And what often happens is that somebody says something that's really hurtful or does something that's just leaves an extra sting and an extra wound. And as parents, I think we struggle with how do we deal with this? Uh, because we got to keep the, the train moving and we want at the same time our kids to learn you can't act that way you can't say those things but if I'm honest a lot of times it's us too it's me and I overreact there's this thing that happens and maybe you've noticed this in yourself where if you if you're given a little time and space you kind of come to your senses well th there's actually something happening in our brains yours and our kids when we get triggered, when we get ticked off, when we get irritated, when we feel like something is threatening what we want or what we need at the time, uh, our brain moves into a different mode. It's, uh, you might have heard this, the fight or flight mode, or there's other reactions too, but uh, we tend to kind of battle each other. And the people that we're most comfortable around, our family, we can easily default to the kind of the lowest common denominator and do and say things that just don't work when we're trying to have a, a family in a house that's peaceful and full of love and kindness and forgiveness. So what do you do with that? Well, it turns out that our brains need some time to readjust. When we get our, our like feelings triggered, when we get kind of irritated or annoyed, uh, we're not thinking clearly. And, and you know that, I know that. I'm not thinking clearly. I'm thinking through 
uh, being insulted or enraged or contempt or something, but I'm not thinking through, hey, this was just a mistake, or I know they didn't mean it, or this isn't a character issue. This is just us having our nerves frayed. Uh, so, but our brains need a bit of time before they kind of switch back to our senses. And the best research says we need some time, about 20 minutes actually, before we can think clearly. And you've noticed that, I'm sure, when you had a big argument or kind of a big fight or conflict with someone, you give it a little time, maybe you sleep on it, and the next day or if, you know, a couple hours later, you're thinking, man, it's not such a big deal. It went from huge feelings, I can't stand that person, I never want to be around them again, to, oh, I kind of love them. So maybe you can consider implementing the 20 minute rule in your house, 20 minutes before you say something, 20 minutes before you give a consequence, uh, 20 minutes before you try to repair something. Give everyone the chance to, for their brains to switch back to normal land and uh, allow yourselves to act with compassion and clarity. So uh, try the 20 minute rule we are trying and it's getting a little bit better every day.